seeing the universe in a new way. Distant galaxies and planets beyond Earth that could potentially harbor life. It used to be the stuff of futuristic fantasy. And lift off. The launch of the James Webb Space Telescope on Christmas Day 2021 means this is no longer science fiction. What we're seeing when we look at these images is the raw material for life. Webb is able to look back in time as far as 13.5 billion years and reveal galaxies as they looked around the time when the Earth and Sun were formed in never before seen sharpness and clarity. But here's the catch. Unlike its predecessor, the Hubble Telescope, the snapshots Webb is sending are invisible to humans. Our eyes can only see a small portion of the total range of light. Webb is designed to see near and mid-infrared wavelengths to show the hidden regions of space. Science visual developers Joe DePasquale and Elisa Pagon work out of the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. They have been tasked with taking the data from Webb and creating something the human eye can see. We can't see in the infrared, so there has to be some level of translation here. But we use physical meaning, like true physical science, in order to represent sort of the color. And it's the job of Lisa and I to take that data, to stretch it so that we can see what's in the data, and then we apply color according to those wavelengths. And so the, the shortest wavelength filters that we have, we use blue for those. And as we move into longer and longer wavelengths, we go to greens and then reds. Joe and Elisa have worked on other images from telescopes like Spitzer and Hubble, but what they are seeing from Webb is unlike anything else. The detail, the clarity, the color, it all just hit me all at once that, yeah, Webb is a next generation observatory. It's gonna you know, change astronomy forever. To give you perspective on how powerful Webb is, here is a previous image that Hubble captured in 1995 of the Pillars of Creation. Now, here is what Webb is showing us. Webb is able to peer into the clouds in a way that Hubble can't, and to see stars in the process of forming, things that we've never seen before are now showing up. These glimpses into the beginning of time have caught the attention of so many, including Canadian scientist Matt Russo. It's something completely foreign to our everyday experience. And so there's always this sense of, of intrigue and wonder about what could be discovered next. What does it all mean? <laughs> How did we get here? As both a professor of physics at the University of Toronto and a sonification specialist, he has the unique ability to understand the science data from the images and translate it into sound. So he amped these up. call them scientifically based galactical musicals. He's creating these sonic interpretations with the help of musician Andrew Santaguida. The Trappist solar system was first captured by NASA's Spitzer Space Telescope in 2017. It was their first effort at adding sound to the universe. Which is an amazing solar system with seven Earth-sized planets but they also happen to be locked in a musical pattern called an orbital resonance. That made it really natural to convert their motions into musical rhythms and pitches. So it starts slow with one planet at a time. So that's all seven planets. These are the rhythms and pitches of these planets. They did this one for pure enjoyment. Then NASA took notice. How did you connect with NASA? We kind of just on our own were just sonifying different things they had released. And we would send to them and they would just start posting it on their own. And then eventually that led to us working for them professionally. Now Matt and Andrew are working on the latest imagery from the James Webb Telescope. Taking the spectacular imagery Joe and Elisa have created, and putting it through a software system Matt designed. This is a, a small section of the Carina Nebula. 
So it's a, a vast cloud of dust and gas where stars are forming. So the first step is to, to break it up into different components. So in this case, you can see there's the, the bottom half, which is a red nebula, and that's very distinct from the top half, which is a more diffuse blue nebula. So we can literally just slice the image into those two parts and treat them a little differently. And then there's, of course, the thousands and thousands of stars. This is what stars sound like. So in some cases, we don't have much control over the way the data sounds. Sometimes it's a more direct translation and we kind of just, we're surprised as anyone when the sound comes out. In other cases where we have a little more musical input, we have to decide, for instance, which musical instrument is going to be triggered by stars. People seem to have an intuition that stars would make kind of like a bell or a chime sound. Each image brings new challenges and they try to be as scientifically accurate as possible. He did the sound for this black hole. So this is a, a real sound wave detected in space in a galaxy cluster. And we were able to see the waves in the image, which means we can extract them and resynthesize a sound. There were a lot of people who were excited to see this, but what kind of feedback did you get? Because there was a mix. Some outlets would say it's an actual recorded sound of a black hole, as if you had a microphone in space, which we know would, would not work for <laughs> several reasons. So it's important when we do sonification to present it for exactly what it is, that it's, it's data converted into sound. There's a whole community. Christine Malik is one of the people benefiting from the sonification of the universe. Blind since birth, Matt's work allows her to feel something she's never felt before. What was your first impression when you first heard what Matt created? I was blown away. I, I had goosebumps on my goosebumps. I had never imagined experiencing astronomy in that way. Moved by the music, she reached out to Matt. He wanted the perspective of a blind or low vision person who hadn't seen the images and whose only access was the sonification. So he asked if I would give feedback on how much they did or did not make sense to me. So those little click noises. Now she regularly helps both Matt and the team at NASA interpret images for the visually impaired. They want this content to be available simultaneously so that I have access to this material at the same time as sighted friends who are getting access as well. And as the Webb telescope travels through outer space, it will continue to reveal secrets and allow everyone a chance to experience a world we could only once imagine. When you look at an image like this, you're looking at that raw material that is you. You are the universe trying to understand itself in that moment. And that's something that is, it's a very unifying thing for anyone from any walk of life to look at these images and ponder that.